What's up, YouTube? Uh, if you've been following me here recently, you've noticed I've started using more high carbon steels and uh, parkerizing them actually to protect them from corrosion. So uh, today I wanted to do a video about it because I've been asked about it a lot and how to do it. And frankly, I'm tired of typing how to do it and everything. So I'm going to do a short video, take you through my process, the stuff you need, and, and I'll show you how to do it. Right now I have a knife ready to go. It's uh, been uh, hand sanded to about 600. I've gone ahead and just etched my logo into it. I didn't mark it, I just etched it in to get some depth to it. So I can, uh, because once you parkerize, you're not gonna be able to see the mark anyways, but you will see the impression from the etching. So uh, that's been done so far. Now it needs to be sandblasted and then cleaned very well and I'll do that inside my house I won't video the the cleaning of it and then submerged in my tank of solution at about 195 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes and that should uh, complete the uh, the process uh, parkerizing is a uh, I should have written this down it's a chemical, I think, phosphate conversion that happens on the surface of the steel, similar to rust, right? But it's uh, a different, uh, I don't know. Anyways, I'm not a chemist. But it leaves a nice dark gray coating on there that's quite durable, actually, and uh, looks pretty good and protects the steel from rusting. So, yeah, uh, the stuff you need. I have this manganese parkerizing solution from Brownells. It's a uh, this should last me a lifetime. It's a full, you know, gallon, and to mix the solution, you only need 14 ounces to I think 114 ounces of water. So it's pretty diluted. Uh, when you mix, when you originally mix the solution, what you'll do is uh, bring your water, your 114 ounces of water, up to temperature to, uh, I believe, 140 degrees. Anywhere between 120 and 160. They tell you to target 140. And then you put in your solution, your 14 ounces of solution. And then you need to activate it or prime it or I don't know exactly the technical term. But I use, you can use powdered steel in a, in a coffee filter. Or I just put in a couple of these... Uh, four aught uh, steel wool biscuits and it worked pretty well uh, leave them in for about an hour and then I fished them back out with some tongs out of the solution let's talk about my uh, the other equipment you'll need I'll bring you all a little bit closer so what you see here is a hot plate I got off of uh, Amazon for I think $30 maybe turns out it's max Temperature is perfect for what I need to do. Gets it right at the temperature, maybe just a little bit over. Uh, a lot of the examples you'll find online, actually you won't find a whole lot of information about parkerizing, but most of it's for firearms and they use uh, horizontal tanks. But I'm doing knives and I want a vertical tank. They also say to use stainless, but I uh, couldn't find what I needed in stainless. So I decided to uh, go another route. I just got some Thin, this is pretty thin walled 4 inch tubing uh, I think it's the same stuff my shop is built out of and then down at the bottom is eh, it's like 3 16 or a quarter inch plate I just rough cut it out welded this off seal tested it make sure it was all good and then set it on there and it's worked pretty well uh, I'm, I, I assume that the solution will last longer in a stainless tank but whatever it's working and I've been using it since January and we are in June and it's working just fine so uh, depending on how you store the solution I just leave it in here sometimes I put something over it to try to reduce the evaporation but as long as you is just evaporating you can just keep adding water so once I mixed it 
I wrote two and a half right here. That means two and a half inches from the top here. I could drop a ruler in and fill it up with water to get to the proper. Uh, uh, Y'all didn't even see that. So you'll see up here two and a half inches. So that's two and a half inches from the top is where the proper fill level is for this mix to have the solution uh, properly mixed. So I just add water to it gets two and a half inches and I'm back to to good again. If you decide to store the solution in another container and you have loss that's not due to evaporation, you need to remix solution and pour it in there because you've actually lost some of the uh, the concentrate that you initially had and through that the concentrate won't evaporate so you can just fill it with water if it's only due to evaporation so I keep an eye on that I use a little temperature gun just to see if it's gotten up to temperature so what I want to do next is uh, take this guy and uh, sandblast it and then take it inside clean it up put it in a <laughs> when I get done cleaning I'll submerge it in a cup of water actually to keep it'll just keep it clean actually I read somewhere to do that and it works so then I'll bring it back hook it to this guy here drop it in for 15 to 20 minutes and bring it back out and y'all can check it out then oh then I'll douse it with oil WD-40 and let that soak overnight so let's get started all right here at my little sandblasting cabinet uh, it's about to get really loud Presser will probably kick on while I'm sandblasting, and I'm going to have to uh, run my little shop vac. So let's get started. I'm back from sandblasting, got it cleaned, sitting in here ready to go. Uh, check the temperature of this guy, we're at 195 degrees, that's exactly where I want to be. Uh, I got this little pad here for, this is a white, uh, they're kind of like the scotch bright pads, but this is a white, it's like almost no abrasive. And uh, I get it from Super Grit, but I'll use that at the end when I pull it out of the water and spray it, like I'll. I'll use it to kind of even it out and clean it a little bit because it'll be kind of rough and this really just kind of cleans it up a little bit and aids in that. Uh, so yeah, let's get it in there and get it started. Take a so just drop that in there. Let it do its thing. So yeah, like I said, 15, 17 minutes-ish and it should be ready to go. Uh, talk about a few other things I could think of that might happen. This is ADC RV2, and we all know, well, if you're familiar with ADC RV2, it likes to build a decent layer of decarb during heat treat. Uh, if you don't grind through all that, it kind of has the same effect as you would have with uh, like dipping it in ferric chloride. You can get some splotchiness usually happens maybe on the spine or somewhere you didn't grind through that uh, decarb so it will show that sometimes you'll just have to kind of inspect everything if you see kind of a splotchy spot uh, you'll have to redo it so you know you'll have to regrind that little spot sand it back down then you can re-sandblast the whole thing and just start over uh, I've had to do that a couple times but uh, I'm getting better at knowing not to do that so anyways we'll come back in like a 
20 minutes and see how it looks. All right, YouTube, I'm back. I got some paper towels. It's been about 16 minutes or so. Got some paper towels, got some WD-40. What I'm gonna do, I forgot to mention earlier, I have this little uh, pitcher of water over here. And what, uh, what I do is I take it out of there and into that cold water and just rinse it off real quick. Then I'll pull it out, dry it slightly, and then I'll start spraying it with WD-40. And then we'll take a look at it. Here we go. Oh yeah, looks good. It's dark gray. All right. Pull it off in here. All right. Pull it out. Oh yeah, she looks good. Oh yeah. Dry it off a little bit. And then I'm going to hit it with some WD-40. Alright, then I'm going to take this little pad and just kind of even out the finish. I don't know, honestly, I don't know if this does much. But sometimes you get like a, a rough spot, like it's built up a little thicker on one spot maybe. And this just kind of evens that out. It's not a visual thing, it's more of a texture thing. It kind of smooths it a little bit. The finish is kind of rough. It looks like it took pretty good. Get it with this. Paper towels will actually leave a little bit of uh, some of their fuzz on here. It'll catch in the uh, on the finish a little bit. Take that and scrub it a little bit more. I actually just. Hit it with some air real quick. Sometimes that later on after I glue it up and everything, I'll coat it with some axe wax. But hopefully y'all can see the finish. I know it's kind of spotchy because of the oils, but that's my process. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope to have some more videos coming soon. Uh, if you would, uh, if you have any questions about it, uh, leave them down in the comments. Or send me a message on Instagram or something. Give me a follow. Subscribe if you want. Hope to have some more uh, cool stuff coming down the road. And y'all take it easy. Thanks for watching. Bye.